you mentioned that you were a skeptic mm -hmm. and you're not anymore. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a topic we haven't delved into as deeply, but right. we're of the same opinion that, you know, for a while, right. we're very concerned about biofuels and where they were going and if algae was really a, a great solution, third generation biofuel. Um, what, what did that for you? What, what changed change, you what from change? a skeptic to a believer? <laughs> yeah. And I should qualify that, that my, my skepticism wasn't that, uh, uh, you know, there wasn't a role for algae and that algae, you know, essentially could contribute in some, some uh, perhaps modest way toward, mm -hmm. toward our energy yeah, and transportation fuel. Yeah. Uh, my, my skepticism was more of, can you really, can you really do it at scale? Mm -hmm. And can you do it in a cost-effective way that reduces essentially the, the, the cost or at least it reduces our dependence on for liquid transportation fuels. Yeah. Um, what I have become uh, much more aware of in, in recent times, and it really has to do more with our understanding of the science, of the, of the basic uh, you know, biochemistry that's going on in some of these organisms that, that uh, give us, give me essentially a, a much more uh, optimism around uh, where the technology will go in the future, is, is that is, is unlocking what I think has traditionally been um, and maybe a, a, a side benefit of some of these some of these technologies. So, in in the in the more conventional use of algae, what what you do is you grow a lot of algae. Yep. It becomes the bio mass yep. itself, and then you harvest it. Yep. Um, and that just seems as an engineering, yep. incredibly challenging. More recently, what I've seen is, as I mentioned in my talk, that you can actually feed algae. Um, certain nutrients, sugars, whatnot, and have the algae be the bioreactor and produce the kind of fuel, the hydrocarbon molecules mm -hmm. that formerly you got by destroying the algae. Mm -hmm. So the algae itself becomes the bioreactor. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden, I don't have to worry about massive amounts of biomass that I need to convert in open ponds and closed ponds. Mm -hmm. I've got a closed bioreactor. That allows me to generate, you know, the the the, the molecules that I'm interested in. Wow. Very different concept, and I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so that's a, that's a new thing for me, and, and, and that's yeah. what gave me, okay. So we need to research this some more. And in fact, there's there's quite a bit of research going on, mm -hmm. and there's some great startups, yeah. uh, some venture capital money. It's still early, yeah. and it'll take time. And for sure, we wouldn't have gotten to that point if we hadn't done the initial investment in the initial Science. idea, and then realize, oh, but we could even take this in this direction. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's new insights that, that I think the science offers that we wouldn't have known had we not made the investment okay. in the innovation. Right yeah, now. sounds yeah. great. Yeah, well, liquid, liquid fuels is a, mm -hmm. I, mean, that's, I mean, that's a big challenge because we're, we're very excited at Clean Technica about elect, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, we hope, will be, uh, they just seem the most practical, the most cost effective in the, in the um, medium to long future for uh, ground transportation. But there's still a huge demand, there's gonna always be a huge demand for air transportation. Right. And uh, the, we have to figure out a, a liquid fuel for air transport that's relatively sustainable or sustainable. Uh, are there other things you're excited about beyond algae that you think, uh, I mean, like you said in your presentation, nobody knows what's gonna be in the future. Yeah. This is yeah. fast growing, fast changing uh, sector. and yeah, I guess the main thing I would say about transport is is that the transport system, much like our, our energy electric electric system, is very inefficient. So mm -hmm. we can do so much better. So uh, w without kind of what I would call breakthrough, uh, a, a new form of transportation fuel that, that can that can power our uh, our, our whole sector, uh, there's a lot to be done just in improving the way in which we presently use energy. Mm -hmm. So so the first thing I would say is is internal combustion engines. Frankly, um, can be improved dramatically from where they are today. We've kind of locked ourselves yeah. into a certain certain you know thermodynamics around you know these engines. And they're 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 heavy. They're massive. Mm -hmm. uh, they you know they've been perfected over a hundred years, so yeah. they're actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but they're not energy efficient. Right. You know they're, you know in to, 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 you know if, if you have even even the most the most advanced engines are thirty percent or something. We need to get to 60, 70, 80 percent. Mm -hmm. And there's some New even internal combustion type processes mm -hmm. that get you to you know 70, 80 percent kinds of kinds of numbers. Yes. So so and that's this is, this is one thing we haven't covered as, as much. I'm not as familiar with. So yeah. that's interesting to hear. Yeah. So so there's a lot to be done just with 
technology as it exists today. Uh, eventually, I think we do need to diversify our fuel mix. So electricity is one of those opportunities. Yeah, I was going to ask. So we're enthusiastic, enthusiastic about electricity, but what do you, what do you think at the moment look like the most promising mix of? Well, you know, I, I'm I'm um, I'm, I'm a, li a little bit um, circumspect about about batteries because you know I, I used to run a battery uh, yeah. research program at a laboratory in New Mexico and and uh, you know watch that technology. It is a slow slow evolving technology yeah. much, well, of, much the, of what we've well the thing we're sort of hinging our hopes on are a handful of company innovators and yeah. research and, and company that that are looking at a whole different deal but but the thing is yeah there's we see these every day and they most the huge right. majority of them don't pan out but there's a handful that we're, we're keeping I, an eye I'm, on I, again I'm but we don't know we don't know yeah there's gonna you know, get to put a lot of rabbits on the track and you know eventually one or two of them will, will, will make it I, I think that, that's an area where we do need innovation lots of I think um, you know, power density, power density at, at, a, at a really low cost uh, is really the key to getting electric vehicles to kind of get to the point they need to be. I recently visited um, a Tesla uh, oh, yeah. you know, in California, and, and you know they're kind of pioneers. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, of course, they use lithium-ion batteries, and they've got a lot of really interesting and innovative things that, that are going on. Um, but this this field has moved slowly. Mm -hmm. So so I think yeah. electric vehicles maybe have a future. You know. I don't count. Do you out. have any thought? Do you have any thoughts that you could share on some of the technologies I was thinking about, like uh, Daniel Sadaway's uh, liquid metal battery, uh, EOS? Um, you know, some. Yeah, I don't have as much insights as to some of those new chemistries. Yeah. I think there is. Uh, They're still some, under under wraps with what they can yeah. share. So. Right, and and I think for the for the most part, um, I think there is some some innovation there that can that's going to knock your socks off. I, I think for the most part. There, there are still other other approaches. I, I'm still uh, not giving up on fuel cells mm -hmm. and um, and using hydrogen as a, as a, as a storage mm -hmm. media. Uh, it's a good carrier. I mean, it, it really is a good carrier. You can use excess uh, you know, electricity to essentially uh, generate uh, these kind of storage fuels that, that allow you to, to, to do fuel cells, uh, which is an elegant approach to to, to transport. Uh, if uh, and, and in fact, many of the auto manufacturers still have. Very active programs yeah. in fuel cells. I have, I have yeah. four new um, um, vehicles on our campus uh, mm -hmm. by an OEM that is uh, that is testing out fuel cells. Yeah, fuel cells are a real one of those technologies that I don't even have a stance on because I know experts uh, who have worked on mm -hmm. this technology, hydrogen, uh, for years. Uh, examples, for example, Dr. Jerome of uh, Climate Progress, yeah. who used to work in the yeah. administration. And uh, who are very, very critical of crit critical of this uh, yeah. idea of this revolution. At the same time, you see the major auto manufacturers are still heavily investing in this as a yeah. potential. If if you just look at the manufacturing costs of, of say a fully electric vehicle versus a fuel cell vehicle, mm -hmm. I think what you'll find is the auto manufacturers are much more bullish about the the, the manufacturing cost opportunities mm -hmm. on the fuel cell side. Now, it doesn't speak to infrastructure. Yeah, that's a whole right. Big, the that's infrastructure. A, that's a whole big issue. A different issue. But I think what it, what it suggests to me is that uh, we still have a number of options. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving up on any of these just yet, uh, primarily because I think the toughest nut to crack is our transport sector. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you know, th there I think we, yeah, I think the first thing you do those is, is get get much more efficient than we are today. That will reduce the, the demand on what we what we expect of things like biofuels of all kinds, mm -hmm. and then in much that's the same pitch I was making for buildings. I mean, if you yeah, reduce yeah. The, the load so to the point where you can actually provide renewables as the supply, mm -hmm. it's a great match. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, one, it, you don't do the renewable thing without the without the efficiency exactly. thing. And so in the transport sector, it's even more pronounced. Right. And you have less choices in terms yeah. of what we, what we offer. So It seems much more challenging. Yeah, I agree. Much I, more challenging to get that and, and I think for heavy duty vehicles, especially for you know, things like ships and planes, you know, like going to be using diesel and things like that for, for some period of time. Uh, but that's not to say that in the long run there aren't other options, and so we'll, we'll work on those, I think. Yeah, so well, it's great, great to get your opinion on those topics.